Hi, I'm Dustin Harder and this is The Vegan Roadie. Welcome to Florence. Florence is the capital of Tuscany, attracting millions of tourists each year. It's particularly noted for its culture, renaissance art, and architecture. Florence is home to several museums and art galleries like the Uffizi Gallery or the Palazzo Pitti. Because of Florence's artistic and architectural heritage, it's been ranked by Forbes as one of the best cities in the world. Florence is also an important city in terms of Italian fashion. It has been marked in the top 15 of fashion capitals in the world. While Florentine food grows out of the tradition of peasant eating, rather than rarefied high cooking, I'm certain the cuisine will be served with stylish flair. Let's get a move on and see what's cooking. I'm the Vegan Roni and I have one mission, to keep it vegano while on the go. I've been hustling myself all over enjoying the delicious bites that Italy has to offer. But sometimes when you're traveling and you're enjoying all of the local cuisine, it's nice to give your system a break. That's when places like Carduccio are a welcome find. With a menu full of organic fruits and vegetables, it's the perfect respite from carbs. Cozy and hip with creative plates that are colorful and beautifully crafted. You can't go wrong when looking to add a little natural pep to your step with local ingredients that are fresh and tasty. With a menu that changes often based on freshly harvested fruits and veggies, I knew I was in for a treat. First up, the Super Green Smoothie. A super simple blend of banana, kale, lemon, and almond milk. <sighs> Hits the spot, but now I'm craving some greens and sustenance. Lucky for me, they have an extensive food menu. I got the kale salad with steamed sweet potatoes, pomegranate, celery, quinoa, and walnuts, served atop a bed of finely chopped kale that had been lightly tossed with olive oil. I feel refreshed and ready to go, but I'm not leaving here without one of their fresh pressed juices. I grabbed the Barba Biotola with beetroot, apple, and carrots, spiced up with lemon and ginger. Let's get moving. This next place received high marks and stellar critiques all across the board on TripAdvisor, Yelp, and Happy Cow. I'm excited to try Gemella Vegan and see if it holds up to the glowing reviews. Gemella Vegan has a welcoming atmosphere that pairs nicely with the scratch-made offerings, down to the mayonnaise and yogurt prepared with love by the owner, Lucia Salvadori, and her team. Lucia left the world of jewelry design in 2013 to pursue her dream of creating a place where she can pass on the compassion and love she has for animals, humans, and the environment. Lucia's smile and winning recipes has landed Giamella Vegan in the top 12 vegan restaurants in all of Italy. At Giamella Vegan, you design your own plate and then pay by weight. I chose the house-made lemon seitan, roasted pumpkin, and radicchio and broccoli salad. Lucia doesn't skip on the sauces. I told her to give me her favorite three, a cashew nut cheese, the lupini with capers, and a spirulina mustard that was shockingly out of this world. Vegan or not, this is a seitan that will satiate any palate. Uh, the, my favorite, then I cook it every day, cook it every day, are um, aubergine with inside the, our nut cheese. Eggplant stuffed with a scratch-made cheese made of a soy base and bursting with flavor. This stuffed eggplant was everything. Oh, it's so good, amazing. I know. This is amazing. People love uh, our food because uh, it's not only food, but they feel uh, a color, uh, attention than uh, we put inside when uh, when we when we work and don't forget to grab yourself a ricotta ball made of house ricotta cheese mixed with onions and carrots and baked to perfection I've never tried anything like this I'm really excited mm -hmm. melts in your mouth it's delicious as always, some dessert was calling my name. 
mini chocolate tarts, strawberry tarts, cheesecake, and chocolate topped ricotta cream, it was hard to pick just one. But all said and done, I had to try the cannoli. Everything at Giamelli is baked, not fried, and this cannoli was no exception. It didn't lack in crispiness due to the change in procedure. It had the perfect crunch paired with Lucia's secret recipe of vegan whipped ricotta. Giumella is located in southern Florence, just on the outside of the city, and it's worth the trip. Be sure to pick up some snacks for your hotel room if you only plan to visit once during your time in Florence. You won't regret it. Next stop was La Fate, which translated means the fairies. La Fate opened in 2014 with the combined efforts of owner Serenella Muniki and chef Gabriele Poloni. Serenella is an astrology expert and designed the concept in fusion with her passion for astrology. If you call ahead and give her enough time, she will even design a plate that is in line with your astrological needs. Chef Gabriele Poloni has several cookbooks under his belt and a line of experience as the executive chef for several restaurants in Italy since the 1980s. Thanks to chefs like Gabriele, the crusade for vegan options has become easier and easier over the years. Chef, what's exciting to you about creating a vegan menu? What I usually used to say to people when they ask me about making a vegan kitchen is that people think that we have to take off something. But I say, you don't need to take off, but you have to add something. It's love for other uh, human beings or other beings, like animals. Chef Gabrielli went to work preparing his special pumpkin roast, perfect for a crisp autumn night. Starting with a mixture of wheat gluten and chickpea flour, adding roasted pumpkin, sage, rosemary, garlic, salt, and pepper, and kneading it into a fine dough. He then rolled it up in parchment paper and set it to cook in the oven for an hour. The result was a delicious plate of succulent pumpkin roast topped with a creamy gravy. What do you see as the future of vegan? I see that, oh, well, uh, here in Italy is one of the most popular things that's growing up in this moment. So I, I wish that next generation will be born already vegan. I had a feeling the desserts would be no slouch and I was correct. Chef Gabrielli showed off his culinary prowess presenting a decadent and creamy tiramisu topped with layers of coffee sponge cake, cream made of coconut milk, and dark chocolate, topped with cocoa powder. Other choices on the evening's roster included a cheesecake made of a soy yogurt and soy vanilla cream, topped with a house-made strawberry jelly. My eye was on the scacciata con uva, similar to a grape pie. What was special about this pie, though, is that the crust is almost like bread. The grapes used for this particular recipe are actually the grapes that are left over from wine season. The crushed grapes are mixed with sugar to create the thick grape jelly that is sandwiched between the flaky layers of crust. Finally, I settled for a traditional Biscotti di Prato, named after Prato, a town next to Florence. The Biscotti is served with a sweet wine, Vincanto, or holy wine. It was recommended to dip the cookie in the wine for the perfect combination, and the recommendation was spot on. From dinner to dessert, everything at La Fate is dangerously delicious. Now let's go explore some of the more traditional dishes of Italy. Just like Florence, El Vegetariano has a history all its own. What is now a bustling veggie-centric experience with a line out the door, open to the public, used to be a co-op, and before that, a members-only social club. It opened publicly officially 10 years ago and hasn't slowed down since. The oldest vegetarian restaurant in Florence, now having been open for 37 years. But you heard correctly, vegetarian. Be mindful when placing your order and ask questions to ensure a fully vegan experience. The knowledgeable staff is more than happy to help you navigate the menu. I stopped in just to see what all the fuss was about and asked them to serve me up a traditional poor plate. I was given a plate loaded with sautéed Swiss chard, green salad, buckwheat bread, and a traditional bean soup made from Bartoloni beans and tomato sauce. Whether it's just soup or something heartier, 
It's not hard to see why Il Vegetariano has grown in popularity after all of these years and remains steady with a line out the door for both lunch and dinner service. If you can, get here before 12.30 to find yourself a seat. The locals tend to flock here for lunch around 1 o'clock and you'll be hard pressed to find yourself a seat after that. Visit il-vegetariano.it for more information. Beauty, glamour, fashion, what do all these things have to do with food? Everything when it comes to love, Osteria Vegetariana. The atmosphere is gorgeous and the small plates are designed for vegans, vegetarians, and those battling with a gluten intolerance. I'd say that's pretty glamorous, wouldn't you? For dinner service, the menu is a la carte, comprised of small, elegant plates. For lunch, they have more comprehensive dishes available and offer a special including one entree, water and coffee, for only 10 euro between noon and three. That can't be beat. The chef brought the couscous to the table and I thought it would serve as a simple side dish, but it was paired with a caponata comprised of eggplant, capers and celery, seasoned with sweet vinegar and sweet and sour sauce. Definitely not your average couscous. But the pad thai was calling my name. At first sight, it appeared to be your standard pad thai, but I was pleasantly surprised with the burst of flavors from the combination of rice noodles, seasonal vegetables, chili peppers, tamari sauce, and peanuts. A great place to bring a group of people offering something for everyone. Be sure to stop at Love Osteria Vegetariana when you're making your way through Florence. The best thing about Florence is you can be as indulgent or healthy as you like, and sometimes you run into Raw. Raw opened its doors in 2016 and is a 100% vegan and raw restaurant, featuring cold-pressed juices, fresh smoothies, raw desserts, raw snacks, raw gelato, grab-and-go raw salads and sandwiches, and more. They even offer seasonal specials that are crafted daily. Raw's simplistic design is inviting and only accentuates the colorful food options. With an array of savory and sweet options, I was pleased as punch to try the gelato with six offerings. I had a variety including chocolate, green peanut, and banana coconut. I highly recommend the nori salad with a delicate cabbage slaw, marinated broccoli, algae nori, and black sesame paired perfectly with a miso dressing. Fast and fresh, you can't go wrong. For those of you that are gluten-free, hashtag raw is the place to be. And what's that now? Vegan raw gelato. Run, don't walk, to hashtag raw. There's so much to see and eat in Florence that I could explore forever, but I've been invited to a local's apartment and now I'm going to take a break from the sights and bites and get cooking with the Familia. Well, we've been showcasing authentic Italian dishes, now we're gonna shake things up with a twist on a classic. Helena Dizza Linares has been an avid vegan for almost two decades, opening her restaurant, Dolce Vegan, in Florence in 2010. The restaurant was popular and among one of the first vegan restaurants in Florence. Helena took a temporary hiatus from the restaurant business, but invited me over to her home to share some of her favorite vegan dishes with me. Uh, for me, the, the first reason is for ethic, so for the animals, absolutely. Uh, so I consider uh, uh, all, all the animals the, the same, with the same rights. So a dog is like a cat, like a pig, like a, a cow. Helena put a twist on the Italian classic pasta alla carbonara on my visit. Together, we worked out some delicious zucchini noodles and used the bits left over with roasted plantains to make the batter of what would now be a zucchini carbonara flatbread. We sauteed some thinly sliced roasted plantains and tossed some jackfruit in the pan as well, giving it just the right amount of heat to crisp it up. We combined the jackfruit and plantains with the zucchini noodles and added some olives for the perfect balance of flavors. Using the same skillet, we made a thick flatbread with the mixture from earlier containing plantains and zucchini. 
Once the flatbread was ready, it was slathered with freshly mashed avocado and topped with the noodle mixture, and finally sprinkled with pomegranate seeds. So at the beginning, uh, there wasn't uh, any vegan food in Florence. So the, the most important things for me was uh, to make uh, the, um, the dishes as good as the, the regular one. Dinner was ready. This vibrant and healthful dish complemented the spread Helena had already prepared of fresh fruits and vegetables like winter melon, pumpkin and eggplant cream, green salad, plantain bread, and a delectable persimmons jam. While Helena offers a full vegan menu at Dolce Vegan, she has been focusing her culinary sights on a more fruitarian and raw approach in the last couple of years, taking traditional Italian foods and giving them a healthful boost. I love me some pasta and pizza, and I have had my fill while I've been here in Italy, but it was a treat to uncover another perspective on an Italian favorite. Check out dolcevegan.it to find out just where you can get these eats when you're in Florence. For now, let's head back to the Airbnb for our five ingredient challenge. Carbonara is a pasta dish traditionally made with eggs, cheese, bacon, and pepper. I had a few really terrific carbonaras on this journey and I wanted to give you a super simple one to make at home. Your five ingredients for the sauce are quarter cup nutritional yeast, three quarter teaspoon smoked paprika, half cup olive oil, vegan bacon of choice, chopped. Some of my favorite vegan bacon brands are Sweet Earth Farms or the Herbivorous Butcher, but one of the ones most commonly found is a tempeh bacon made by Tofur and a quarter cup cashews. You can use this sauce with any sort of pasta you like, but I'm going to use one pound of prepared spaghetti to make a spaghetti carbonara. In a blender, combine the cashews, olive oil, paprika, nutritional yeast, and salt to taste. I start with about a quarter teaspoon and add more as needed. Blend it all together until smooth. Mix it with prepared pasta of choice and chopped up vegan bacon. Toss until well combined. If you find the sauce is too thick and doesn't quite coat all of the pasta, you can add a little water. Best if you use water reserved from the water used to cook pasta in. Serve up portion amounts on plates and garnish with some fresh black pepper for the final touch. Perfectly creamy and smoky. Recreate it for yourself. Get the recipe at veganrody.com and show me your recreations on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, tagging me at the vegan roadie with the hashtag Kailed It. For even more vegan roadie recipes, be sure to get my new book, The Simply Vegan Cookbook. You can order it on amazon.com and get it everywhere books are sold. It's amazing that Florence, a very heavily meat-influenced culinary area, is expanding their view and adding more vegetable options to their menus, based not just on tourist requests, but also the locals. With a beauty that is unmatched, the ability to be food forward only elevates what is already appealing to travelers in Florence. Please click subscribe and share the Vegan Roadie channel with everyone that you can, any way that you can. I hope you'll join me in the next and final episode of season three when I visit Rome. Until then, keep on cooking and remember, it's nice to be nice. Dustin Harder's shirts designed by Lois Eastland, NYC. Presented in partnership with Vegan Travel Club. I'm Giovanni. <laughs> okay, <great. laughs>